January 22nd, 2017. I'm Dead from Cleveland. You're listening to Video Game News Radio with your hosts, Kevin Bear, Don Anderson, and Larry Mack. Brian's not here this week. He's, uh, he's at a funeral. No, it's his girlfriend's birthday. If you believe that Brian celebrates his girlfriend's birthday all evening long, then that's why he's not here. Oh, I'm sure they're celebrating this evening, Kevin. It's fine. This is a whole episode where somebody's not belching into the microphone. <laughs> well, it's just... Well, the problem is, without him belching or whatever, um, I, we're going to have a hard time reaching a 20-minute runtime on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what do you do with that? I didn't get a chance to invite Alexa or anyone on the show. But next time, something, Brian tells me a little bit ahead of time. But sometimes, when you're, you know, planning on celebrating someone's birthday, you don't <laughs> have did, enough time to... He, he didn't know let, ahead of time that right, this was birthday. Let, let people know. <laughs> That he was going to be unavailable. Hey, in an hour, it's going to be Jody's birthday, so I'm busy. <laughs> Just happens to fall right on the show yeah. time. Yeah. She, oh. she really wanted to celebrate the actual time she was born, big, and it happened to be 8 p.m. She's a big she's a big uh, Steelers fan. And, uh, that is she, true. She, <laughs> it's, not, it's not true. You're going to be sad when she realizes that's not a touchdown. Because... There's cheerleaders in the NFL, and that gives Jody enough reason to hate the NFL <laughs> with a passion. If there's any women in the episode or anything, like, there's, well, there's no, like, I, like I, like I, like I know she's mostly hockey, but I thought she was a Steeler fan. Uh, I don't. Know. I, I think she I, is. I, you might be right, Larry. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, you might be right. I, she liked the Penguins. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe, maybe it's maybe I assumed she was because she was a Penguins fan. Yeah, she probably has no idea how football's played. There's no cheerleaders uh, on that. Yeah, other, other than there's cheerleaders, so fucking yeah. Probably just gives Brian an evil look if that ever comes on. <laughs> he's watching the news and Super Bowl highlights come out. He's like, "You motherfucker!" Yeah, starts throwing things, <laughs> smashing shit. Okay, let's play our top 20 titles of the week drinking game. Uh, This is where we basically list off the top 20 titles of the week, and if it's uh, not a game, you have to drink. And uh, what you drink is up to you. I'm drinking Diet Squirt. Squirt. They still make Squirt. They make it in diet. (laughs) Only only the diet form. (laughs) Diet Squirt. Uh, Number 20. NHL 17 for the PlayStation 4. Hey, Don, did you end up buying that PlayStation 4 that you were looking at? Why don't we talk about that? Oh, you <laughs> say, are you saving that? Saving it for the Well, maybe I just reminded you because you'd be like, I got nothing. Yeah, while, right. While you're playing games on it. Number 19, <laughs> Xbox One stereo headphones. That's a drink. That is not a game. Number 18, Turtle Beach earphones. Yeah, uh, Turtle Beach Force Stealth Gaming Headset. Either way, that's a drink. Number 17. I never understand why the music gets so loud. Like, I don't know if it's loud for you guys, but it's... Can't hear it at all. It, okay. I, which is what I expect, but like, in my micro, in my headset, rocks out, and it's only on one out of a hundred. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I can't make it quieter without not having it. And then we have to hear Anderson's stomach gurgle. Come on. Hunger. <coughs> I'm not so that hungry. hungry. I ate once today. Does your mom make you special food there? Does she no, make like that? I, I do it that ooey malooey or whatever that was called? Ooey malooey. What? Is that what it's called? Yeah, that stuff's ooey good. Ooey Does she make that? Do you ever no, get that? No. Oh, I get some sometimes. Uh, so maybe that was just like in high school and now. Yeah. You're an older boy. You don't have to eat that. Yeah, you don't get that anymore. There's no sound on the Twitch feed. Really? That's what I'm being told. I didn't even know we were still on Twitch. I never. Well, I moved back to Twitch because there was <laughs> there was less of a problem. Check, check. Um, hello. 
Okay, hold on, let me do something. Hold on, people. I'm gonna unmute this so it might make some noise. Okay, I can hear myself on Twitch, so whoever's saying that's wrong. Or I just fixed it. That's also possible. Yeah, that's okay. Yep, can hear you now. All you missed was that Anderson's mom makes food that he's not allowed to eat. Oh, no, she doesn't make the food anymore. I'm not allowed to eat it. I'm a girl. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. Brian's not here. Bri- yeah, Brian's not here. So you can Oops. disconnect now. Because you'll get here mocking me. Number 17, Lego Jurassic World for Xbox One. Number 16, Fantastic Beasts. Di- Lego Dimensions. That's a drink. It's just a bunch of toys. Number 15, The Legend of Zelda for the Wii U. That is officially, officially the last Wii U game from Nintendo. So that, there, you know, will there be third-party stuff? I don't know. But the Xbox 360, done. PlayStation 3, done. And now the Wii U is officially done when that's released. If it's already released, then it's officially done. You can cry about it all you want. Just put, put it away. Get your Nintendo Switch if you want to play new Nintendo games. But uh, that's the end of the... Uh, I don't even know what generation we're on anymore. People have generations. Let's see. Let's look it up real quick. What generation game system? I saw Star Trek Generations. It was rubbish. Listen, Larry, you cannot see the new Star Trek movie. Oh, I don't plan on it. Because, literally, it, it'll kill you. <laughs> and so, we don't we don't want you to die. Uh, so, you really can't watch it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. People enjoyed my review of the last fucking Star Trek abomination. I don't think, I don't think you, I seriously don't think you could handle it. I think you would just <laughs> rupture a blood vessel somewhere and that would be the end. <laughs> like, wouldn't even make it through the movie, they would just find me in my at, seat. At the very least, you're gonna have a stroke. And <laughs> you're gonna talk all funny on here. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Larry, uh, I, I heard you were gonna go see the new Star Trek movie. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> Don't say that around if it's triggering. They, 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 uh, they have to. They have to turn on. We have to use my webcam because I'll be in the fucking Captain Pike chair. Goes Ooh. into seizures as soon as somebody mentions it. Hey, Larry, I heard it was bad. Ooh. <laughs> um, this is yeah. The seventh generation is now ended. I'm I'm calling it seventh generation of game systems, and we are now on the eighth. Generation. Uh, Larry, you. you you managed to miss the entire seventh generation. You you were in the sixth with the Wii U or the Wii, right? Um, but uh, you you managed to go the five years of the seventh with uh, without owning any of the three consoles. Uh, woohoo! Yeah, good for you. And here I am on a gaming podcast. Yeah. Save, saved yourself a lot of money. Number fourteen, Witcher Three: Wild Hunt for the Xbox One. Number thirteen, Battlefield One for the PlayStation Four. Number 12, NHL 17 for the Xbox One. Number 11, Battlefield 1 for Windows. Number 10, the $20 PlayStation gift card. Everybody drink. Not a game. Number 9, Lego Dimensions. Batman for Xbox One. That's a drink. Larry, what are you drinking this week? This week we are drinking because... Uh... I've realized I got to do something with the weight. So, uh, it's, it's SoCo and diet Pepsi. So, no, oh, is that, is that better? Southern comfort? Is that... Yeah. Then SoCo and Pepsi, I guess. Less, uh, <laughs> yeah. Less calories. Number eight, Turtle Beach. Another, another headset. Apparently a lot of people were go- in need of a new headset. Maybe they smashed theirs in anger during the rioting that went on this yeah. weekend. They heard the. They heard there was going to be no more Wii U. They're like, "Fuck! Yeah. Damn it! Now I got to buy a new headset." Turtle Beach communicator headset. That's a drink. Don, Coke or water? 
Uh, water and Red Mountain Dew. Oh, it's Mountain Dew night. I'm telling both, you. both like you're mixing them. Like it must be a cocktail. cocktail. I mean, I'm mixing them as in like I drink one once and then I drink the other one. Must be uh, celebrating. Yeah, celebrating something. What could I have done this week to get me to celebrate? Number seven, Poochie Yoshi's World Yoshi Amiibo. It's like the dog. It's a good name, Poochie, and it's a toy. It's a drink. I was going to say, I hope that's not a game. It's the last drink. Number six, Minecraft for the Xbox 360. Number five, Battlefield 1 for the PlayStation 4. Number four, Dragon Ball 2 Xenoverse for the Xbox One. Three is Battlefield One Early Deluxe Edition, whatever, for the Xbox One. Number two, Paper Mario Color Splash for the Wii U. And number one, up 1,253% this week, is the Make Larry X Sandwich Game. PlayStation VR Until Dawn Rush of Blood. And it's a whole $10. Woo! go folks games games coming out this week today according to the list that may not even be right <laughs> multi-platform we have Hellenica and nefarious or nefarious and then Monday for PlayStation 4 we have nog starts with a G G N O G and Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 final chapter prologue and for multi-platform, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now, if I was a guessing man, I'd say those are coming out on Tuesday and not on Monday, because most of the time games come out on Tuesdays. But I'm just following the list here. And then Wednesday for PC, we have Awaken. That's it. That's a German open air festival, isn't it? Awaken Fest. Um... All right. Well, since Brian's not here, I can't start with him. So, Don, oh, tell, I wasn't us, ready. tell us about your week. No, I wasn't ready for this. Uh, nothing. I didn't do anything. Okay, fine. <laughs> you broke it out of me. Okay, stop twisting my arm. Uh, I finally broke down. And uh, I figured I figured since I bought, or I figured since I paid off like a bunch of debts that have been lingering since like 2009 and 2011 and stuff, and I'm trying to clear up my credit history and stuff. I figured I would take one of these credit cards I got and go buy a PS4. So, <laughs> yeah, yes, that's usually the best way to do it. Once you get it paid off. Right. Because you, sure, you don't want your revolving credit to be completely empty because then they're like, oh, wait a minute. That's not good either. So well, I just yeah, want to always want sure, something on there. I want to make sure it works. Right. You know, I don't want to get stuck in a position where Never I'm like, mind I, buying a car or anything. Right. Responsible. Right. right. This... I mean, yeah, I figure I'm waiting anyways. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you, 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 you weren't going to get a car for that much. Money. I mean, you can't get a car with a credit card unless you have way better credit than I do. Right. So why, why, yeah. It's... And so I figure, I figure, I have to wait for all this stuff to clear off of the uh, uh, credit off report. The credit, off the credit report. There we go. I'm sorry. I'm doing five different things at once right now. Playing a video game. You know. <laughs> reading comments because people put my name in them and it's just like, what? What did he say about me? Um, I'll kick his ass. Exactly. But then it's not. I don't know what a root kid is. But okay. So, <clears throat> the, uh, I figured I figured I gotta wait for that anyways. So, yeah. well, why not? Yeah, might as well enjoy the credit while you have it. Might as well enjoy the time that I'm standing here with no car. Right. So. I'm um, in. I gotcha. Yeah, so. So there, so I did that. And now I'll get a car here in the next, I don't know, a little while, <laughs> eventually. Uh, my, my dad, of course, is letting me, is reminding me every time. Uh, <laughs> Not to slam it into a fire hydrant. This stuff like that, you know, be careful. How many miles yeah. have you put on it? You silly <laughs> kid. <laughs> How many miles have you put on it? You know, oh, 57 yeah. cents a mile. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's got a notepad next to the door that you have to fill out each day when you get back. Oh, right. I have to, I have to log my miles. I'm like Brian. I got to drive from one place to the other. I got to log the miles, how long I've had the engine off. You know, 
uh, all that fun stuff. So, but then I so I so I got a PS4, and there you go. Now I just have to pay for the service so I can play online, which I won't do right away because I just don't have the money for it because I got to buy a car. So that sixty dollars can sit somewhere and wait. But you get, a, uh, you get a lot of free games with that sixty dollars. Well, exactly, and that's the other thing. I get to play that second Maniac Mansion and stuff. Um, it's so, sixty bucks for a year. year. Oh. For a year. Yeah, uh, or fifteen bucks a month or something like that. It's it's whatever. It'll work out. So, so I got that, and then I stood there, and I think I've come to the realization that I don't know. If I if I'm into video games anymore, <laughs> it really sucks because I just bought this thing. Uh, I mean, I am. Don't get me wrong. I, I still play games and stuff, but I don't have that passion like I used to have, where it was like I gotta get this game and I gotta play this and I gotta do this and I gotta, you know, it's not like that at all anymore. Because I'm standing there and the guy who, the GameStop, he's like, "So what kind of games do you like?" And I just kind of looked at him and shook my head. And I was like, "I, I don't uh, think any. I don't think I like anything anymore." <laughs> right. I was like, I just don't think I like anything anymore. And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I go, well, I'm in sports games. I guess I, I like sports games. And he goes, well, here's the new baseball. And I'm like, no. I'm like, that's not. <laughs> and, he, and then he goes, he grabs this other game. He goes, how about this game right here? And I go, yeah. I go, what is that, first person or third person? He goes, first person. I go, no. And he's just looking at me like, what kind of weirdo are you? Do, do you have any horse breeding games? I'm really into those. Yeah, do we have horse racing? Maybe a NASCAR? That's what he did ask. He's like, NASCAR? And I, he asked about NASCAR, and I turned and looked at him, and I was like, no. No, <laughs> no that, that'll never happen. If you were any other man, I would kill you. Ace. Yeah, if I knew you better than I do, you'd be dead. Uh, but, but I, I, you know, whatever. I got some stuff, and I picked up this new game called Until Dawn. Uh has Hayden Penitary and that creepy dude from Mr. Robot. And uh, I was like, oh, it's that creepy dude from Mr. Robot. Well, Kevin Bear has been talking to me about this for so long now. <laughs> it must be a sign. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was like, I got to get this game. God Which, wants me to have this game. Which guy is the creepy guy from Mr. Robot? The creepy guy. Everybody's Elliot. creepy on that show. Christian Slater's not creepy, but Elliot is. He's so, the, the, so Elliot's the creepy guy? Yeah. You ever see him? He looks like... <laughs> Like a mix of like, I think you want to Tony for, for anything. Yeah, like I've never watched the show, but I, I I knew exactly who the creepy guy was. I was like, well, clearly the creepy guy, is fucking the creepy guy. Right. Oh my God. It's a creepy. He's a creepy. He's the creepy yeah. main character. Yeah, he is. He is clearly not acting. He is actually up to something. There's something going on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Behind those yeah. dead eyes. Yeah, it's. It's creepy, man. Yeah, he, yeah. There, there, there are there are human skins in his closet. Maybe, possibly. I would not doubt it. Yeah. But so there you go. So I've stepped into the new universe, I guess you'd call it. Finally, up to my game, if you will. <laughs> but now I got to buy all these games that I used to have. Like I had Grand Theft Auto for five, Grand Theft Auto Five, which has been out for like years now, and. A used copy on the PS4 is still 55 bucks. And I'm like, I've already got a copy of this game for the PS3, but it's not the same. So, let's see what happens. There you go, that's all I got. Well, I mean, I've... Do I have games from... Yeah, I've probably got some games I could loan you if I ever see you. Yeah, well, we don't do game night anymore, so... I mean, Larry's <laughs> buying a house, so we could always... Go to his place and have game night. We can't have it at your house. No, we can. I'll still have game night. I just haven't, you know. I, Good I don't Larry. Know. Yeah, since we can't have it here anymore, I had to wait until Larry bought a house because a we can't have it here, and b we won't all fit in Larry's apartment. If we go to Larry's house, we're gonna have to watch some kind of crap movie, though. No, I we can have it here. I, I just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I intend to have it again. It's first just, of all, I, I, I always show great movies. First of all. <laughs> How the fuck do you switch to the handgun in this game? There it is. Now we're in trouble. I have to hold the button down. Kind of looks like a blaster from Star Wars. Larry, how was your week? My, you know what? My my week was life changing, Kevin. Let me tell you. So, um, let's see. I continue to be a workaholic, obviously, um, because <laughs> because I really have nothing else in my life. I can. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I can either 
sit at my at my desk, you know, 70 hours a week and like be a contributor and really facilitate for the team and do all the things that I do pretty damn well if I do say so myself. Or I can sit in my apartment alone and try to come up with compelling reasons not to open up my wrists. So Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you if you had gotten married and had kids, it'd be different for you right now. Oh no, wait. No. Oh yeah, I did. Oh. <laughs> Cancel that. Yeah. So uh, I guess that okay. you know what? I'm uh, I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> um So yeah, I I, uh, I, uh, I continue to work too much. Now, now basically what has happened at work, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but our boss uh, took another position, so we no longer actually have a boss. Is that Rob? Yeah, that's Rob. Rob's no longer my boss. Um, he moved out to another position, and most people in the building assumed that I was going to ascend to that role, because I was basically functioning in that capacity anyway. Were you the only one in that building? Um, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know... At 6 a.m. on a holiday, yeah, I'm the only one in the building. Um, Said most people. Yeah. So, uh, but I've come to the conclusion. (laughs) They basically they took the guy who used to be our boss and like used to be Rob's boss before they rearranged stuff, and he's basically handling all the pushing buttons and shit for HR, uh, approving timesheets and all that stuff. Yeah. The day the day to day supervising stuff. I basically do anyway, so why the fuck would they actually hire a manager when right now they already have somebody doing it for free? So I think that's what's going on. Um, So basically I'm doing my old job, uh, about 75% of Rob's old job, and one of the people who used to be on our team and since moved to another role, I'm doing about half of her job. So, were it not for the fact that Susie is a rock star at work, I, I absolutely would have completely... You would have seen me on the news. I would have shown up someplace with a bomb or something by now. Do you work with all of them, like Allison and Megan and like all those people that are at the bar? Or do you just know them through association? Well, I know them through work. Uh, they all work there. Susie's the only one I actually work with right now. Okay, well, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, so I, you guys are all in some squad or something no no yeah allison was in another group and did help our group for a while and then megan was on our team for a little bit but she she's actually now on rob's new team um and she and rob are both trying to get me to post for that position because my my talents are squandered oh my god so anyway i thought i've been working too much well it sounds like things are going well there yeah yeah like they got me doing stuff like my 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 acting sort of boss was like, hey, I need you know we, we have an ask from uh, basically our prioritization committee for the bank. And they're like, so basically me and my zero experience of doing this. He's like, so we need a capacity plan for the team. And I was like, uh huh. So I'm just gonna guess how to do that. So yeah, I'm now doing capacity plans and shit. So yay me. Whatever that is. Yeah. Yes. I don't even know what you guys are doing mortgages or something, right? Uh, Well, I specifically work in default. So not just mortgages. If you default on your loan and owe us money, I'm I'm, I'm the guy who's going to kick in your door. No. Um, I'm one of the 97,000 people touching your account. Say, hey, give us money. He's the one touching your account. Do you ever call yourself on the phone? No, okay. <laughs> I don't call people. Oh, I, I, I am not in a customer-facing position, and as we have discussed, I am looking for a house because I no longer owe people money that I'm, you know, past due on and stuff. I'm. I, I would just be I thinking current. that's because you removed yourself from the the file. Yeah, they're pretty diligent about that because <laughs> I uh, don't think I haven't checked stuff out. I was like, hey. <laughs> No, they they they, they, they keep a pretty tight a lid really on that cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I I did just one of the reasons I'm looking for a house is I went ahead and uh, approved myself for <laughs> a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Um, oh, that's funny. Because what do I care if I default on it? I'll I'll just expunge the file. <laughs> I, worked at the, 
I worked at the library when I was in high school in California, and I would check out books and then check them back in when I didn't bring them back in. So that was. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll come up, you know, Larry McCloskey. Was, no, he doesn't. There. <laughs> Current. Um, so, other than work, the only other thing uh, I did this week was uh, Tuesday, we, uh, our team went out to. Uh, Went out for drinks after work because we had a couple anniversaries on the team because we always get, once you hit certain milestones, one of the things Rob would get as the manager, and since he's not doing that anymore, he forwarded it on to me, um, is we had two big anniversaries on the team. Believe it or not, Susie has been there for 10 years, and uh, this other guy on our team, Dave, he's been there 15 years. So we're like, you know what? Screw the hole. Here's your plaque. And pat on the back let's go out and drink so we went out drinking after work and uh i may have had a little bit too much to drink which would be the bad news if it weren't for the good news and you know what the good news is mm. i found out through my drunken texts Cin- cindy still loves me and there's still hope that we're gonna fix it and we're, oh. and we're gonna get oh. married and be happy together forever oh boy wow she still cares about me and doesn't want me to die why? What's going on with that woman? <laughs> madness. Years and years of madness. But whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you guys most happy, Larry. That seems doesn't, doesn't seem to make her happy. But it makes me happy knowing that she cares and would absolutely come and be with me if, if I was feeling that down about myself. Oh, is, so, that, is that, that you posed the question? You're like, if I was dying, would you come and visit me? Yeah. <sighs> Yes. Yeah, I guess. I might show like, yeah. up. There's, like if a, I, there's hope if, for us yet. If I wasn't busy. Um, <laughs> pretty much. Um, okay. so else? Uh, other than that. It doesn't get weird. Yeah. Any weirder, than, getting... any weirder than it already is. Yeah, it's, hey, God, God chose us for each other for a reason. And, it, you know, she may not see it yet, but she will. Um, I see this on Dateline all the time. It's not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All then. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, all those bastards who tried to take her away from me. We're all gonna learn. <laughs> God's will cannot be subverted. Um, other than that, uh, Kevin and I were talking, so I won't rehash the whole thing because nothing, all that interesting happened. But I am still looking at houses. Uh, I have it right now down to three that I'm really interested in. So I'm sure next week. I'll be sitting here drinking scotch out of the bottle, miserable because all three of them sold. Or, like, I looked at one and, you know, it was the perfect house. And as soon as I put a bid on and as soon as they accepted it and as soon as I signed the mortgage papers, it fell over because termites ate it or something. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, I have not bought any new gaming systems. I do have a, I do have a car still. Um, that's all I got. Well, I'm gonna pause my game. What did I do this week? I went to the dentist. I got the fake tooth thing put in, but it's still not the it's still not the crown. It's just the cap on the tooth. Right. So now I got to go again in two more weeks. I don't think I'd, I'd go through this ever again. This. Uh, this process of getting a, a fake tooth put in rather right. than dentures or whatever. I mean, I guess if I had a choice, but like if a tooth just fell out in the back of my mouth, I'd just have to see how bad it was before I'd actually. <laughs> can, can I still chew food? Right. Yeah. Because it's, this is just ongoing and it's, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's just forever. It's just, it just takes too long. Just, I don't know. It's yep. 2017. They should just have a spray. You spray it in your mouth. <laughs> and it turns into a tooth. That's right. <laughs> should have a tooth there. Perfect. And there would be no there would be none of this drilling into a bone with a screwdriver and then you know ratcheting it into my mouth and everything. It's so crazy. Cuz in a in a thousand years when they dig up my bones to see if I had gold teeth that they can steal, they'll uh <laughs> They'll only find these metal parts in my that were attached to my mouth at one point, and the bullet that took my life. That'll probably stay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
the golden bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll be what's left. Um, yeah, I mean, we had some really stupid warm weather the last couple of days. Uh, warm weather. I know. It's, it's, and it's because it's January, I, like, get in my car, and I'm like, do I want to turn the AC on? Do I want to roll down the window? Okay. I know if I turn the AC on, then tomorrow when I get in my car, it'll be snowing. So I don't know if I want to do that. You don't need to get crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I see my doctor on Tuesday, so it's going to be a lecture about how I'm not losing weight like I should be. And uh, some other things. I'm hoping that's all it is. And then I got to go in and get my lungs scanned, which is, I'm a bit nervous about, but it takes forever to get that done. It actually happens in April. but if, It just feels like it's going to be Tuesday. If the, if the growth... Or whatever the hell it is, has it grown? Then I don't have to get it checked anymore. If it has grown, then yeah, then there's a fucking serious problem. So I have to wait and see. But that's it. Yeah, that's all that's going on in my life. I think I can't think of anything else. Um, I've mostly been playing with Linux devices. I haven't been playing much video games because Noah was sick this week, so he didn't play. Uh, that's it. Okay. Let's do a little news. We got a little bit of news this week. Okay. An academic report claiming that playing shooting games helped improve real-life marksmanship has been retracted due to irregularities in its cited data. Due to, we made it up. Boom Headshot was published in 2012 and claimed to demonstrate that people who played first-person shooting games extensively also became better at shooting real guns. It was headed up by Professor Brad Bushman at the U Ohio State University, who has published other research on how consuming violent media can lead to aggressive behavior. But the report has long been disputed by researchers Patrick Markey, psychology professor at Villanova University, and Malt Elson at Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. <laughs> they have published research that shows how violent games can be beneficial to users. Publisher, communi of course, the Germans would be behind that. First of all, that doesn't that doesn't seem to refute in any way that it would make you a better shot, right? And I'm not sure why a doctor of like psychology would be psychologically. No, it doesn't make you a better shot, huh? What? Publisher huh? Communications Research posted a notice that the report is being retracted following an Ohio State University Committee of Inquiry into the matter. The notice stated that data inconsistencies highlighted by Markey and Elson could not be verified because the data is now missing. The Ohio State University sent a statement to Retraction Watch on the issue. I'm not reading all that. I mean, it could, it could also be missing because it was written how many years ago? Yeah, it's or not even written. Beware the Slender Man oh, is an boy. upcoming documentary about the creepy internet sensation surrounding Slender Man, how it came to be, and the real-life violent acts that were inspired by it. The film premieres tomorrow on HBO. Oh, okay. Slender Man is a fictional character depicted as a tall, faceless man in a suit who traumatizes or abducts his victims, which primarily include children. Three years ago, two 12-year-old girls stabbed another young girl deep in a forest in Waukesha, Wisconsin. The victim was stabbed 19 times, but managed to recover from her wounds. The two girls behind the violent act were arrested, and they told authorities that Slender Man had told them to commit the crime. This HBO documentary is meant to hone in on this strange and troubling event, as well as look deeper into the digital folklore of Slender Man. You know... Even with all the heavy metal music we listened to in the eighties, I don't remember anybody killing anybody because of some, yeah, some, yeah. some, some crazy music. Manowar says this is the path to glory for me. <laughs> you must, die. you must die. I must vanquish you. Hail and kill. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish I didn't have to. Like you're, you're my, like you're like my best friend. But hail and kill. It's not, not even really up to me. Joey, Joey pointed at me. Hey. <laughs> at the show. Hey, after I kill you, I will totally build a fire a thousand miles away and light your long way home. Oh, God. You just priest told me to kill you, like, backwards? Yeah. Yeah, there there was a lot of that suicide 
people on trial for their kid killing themselves because the music told them to kill themselves. Right. And they had to play the record backwards in order to hear somebody saying, do it, or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was just so ridiculous. Like, that, that's, I, that's what drove them over. <laughs> I, always said, I always said if I was going to kill myself, I would have did. I would have done it with a walk. I would have had a Walkman on, and I would have had, like, a Barry Manilow tape in there. <laughs> just to blow everybody's mind to be like, wow, Mandy. Yeah. <laughs> You made him do it. Yeah. So ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Must go to the Copa. <laughs> um, it's just a headline. PC, PC gaming market reaches 30 billion all-time high. Ooh. That's all I'm going to say about that. Impressive. 30 billion a year, I'm thinking, is what it means. Steam top 10 this week. Number 10, The Forest. Number nine, Pit People. That's pit new. People. Number eight, <laughs> Ark Survival Evolved. We are the Pit People. Number seven, Planet Coaster. Number six, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Biohazard 7 <laughs> Resident Evil. That's what it says on here. However you want to call it. Number five, Grand Theft Auto 5. Finally fell five places. Number four, Endless Grand Master Collection. Number three, Astroneer. Number two, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And number one, H1Z1, King of the Kill. Must be on sale. John, did you watch that video yearbook? I I clicked on it, and then I saw Bob Marr's face, and I just shut it off. Because <laughs> it was like in the early in the early parts, his like he came running up to the camera or whatever. Yeah, and they, yeah. Uh, I was just like, no, I'm good. We had a video yearbook when we graduated from high school, the year we graduated. I don't know if that was the only time they ever made one, but that was the first time they ever made one. Yeah, because that was technology back then. Yeah. And uh, somebody we know posted it up on Facebook, and it's completely painful. It's no... I'm, I'm not in it, thank God. Most of us aren't in it. I think because Kelly was on yearbook and she knew better than to put us in it. Although, Rom is in it. So You didn't watch the whole thing, did you? I watch most of it. I've never seen it before. Back in the day when it first came out and everybody like that had it, had it, I would be like, can I watch it? And they'd be like, you don't want to watch it. <laughs> so I never got to see it. I mean, okay, so it's not painful melancholy. It's just painful, dumb, and bad. Yeah. Painful. It's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of sports and it's a lot of activities that the school would have, you know, like pep rallies and things that. Oh, so the real reason you're not in it is it's a bunch. Yeah. It's a video of a bunch of stuff you were never at. Well, I mean, there's some classrooms interview type stuff. It's really short. But yeah, most of it's stuff I'm not in. I think I'm probably in the graduation watching everybody walk by. Somewhere. But it's, well, it's VHS. So, I, I mean, my face probably occupies one scan line <laughs> of, the, of the graphic quality or whatever. So it's. You can't make anything out. It's really blurry. But yeah, it's and it's got bad music. I think it's like Tom Petty <laughs> playing through the whole thing. And it's, just, it's not good. You know, it shows the IX Center and people crying because the school burned down. Oh yeah, that was the, okay. I'm sorry, that was the best part. <laughs> the school burning down and people crying. No, the, the, yeah, yeah. Watching this one girl who who is like, you know, everybody's got that one girl in their class who's like all about everything and she's like we love our school and we have pride and we're gonna teach everybody and you're just like oh shut yeah, up gonna change the world and then she was on there crying just like i can't believe it i was gonna have people over tonight to study and now we're not gonna do that <laughs> no so, yeah, this is, that's why we weren't in it because we we're that's and that's why nobody, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why nobody liked us because they were just like you guys don't even care it's like yeah we don't yeah or all the all the IX Center meant for us was that we had like the shortest day ever, senior year. Got out of school at like eleven thirty. We were barely there, right? Because we came in late, you so get... we'd come in late, and then we just like a couple hours later, we're like, we're leaving. You know, you get all warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Like, like okay, here's your class starting, and then you open your book, and they're like, bring class is over. They shortened all the class times because there was a circus going on, and they had oh, to do the circus. circus. <laughs> there was a circus. <laughs> it's so stupid when you think about it now, but that's mm -hmm. what happened. There was a circus, and they, you know, we used to bring our walkie-talkies and trying to get on the because uh, there were people out in the parking lot working 
trying to get people parked and stuff. And, and remember, we used to bring them big walkie talkies, trying to get on their same line. <laughs> but knew we could talk to them and listen to them and make fun of them. So ridiculous. We used to do some dumb stuff. James Cameron. This will please Larry. You still here, Larry? Yep. Yeah. James Cameron will regain the rights to the Terminator in 2019 and is reportedly heading up a reboot. It may be helmed by Deadpool director <laughs> Tim Miller. <laughs> According to Deadline, Cameron is in early talks with Miller to direct the project, with the rights to the Terminator reverting back to its creator 35 years after the original film's debut in 1984. That's what the movie's about. The rights being transferred back. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for James Cameron. I'm told he has the rights to my movie. Uh, I mean... So, okay, so here, let me guess. First of all, the new Terminator will be black. Second of all... It'll be a woman. The, uh, yeah, the guy sent to save Sarah Connor will absolutely be gay. And third of all, everybody will be some smart-ass, wisecracking, whatever. Because the other thing I've noticed in today's movies is, like, there's never that awkward dude. Everybody is super witty and super sarcastic and super whatever. Like, there's never... Like, like, like you think about... You know, like, we were watching Friday the 13th movies the other week. Crispin Glover's character in Friday the Thirteenth Part Four was so awkward and uncomfortable to watch. You're like, you know what? I like him because that was me as a teenager. And like now, every every person in every movie is like a wisecracking asshole. Well, I I'll just I don't look. You don't <laughs> need to. You don't need to make another Terminator. It, yeah. it, it was a pretty simple premise, right? Right. Robot from the future <laughs> trying to kill woman so she doesn't have a kid. It's like, there's nothing. It's just a robot. Like, it's what else? Go. There's nothing. You've done it all at this yeah. point. You don't yeah. need to make go. another movie. Yeah, for, I, they, they didn't even really need a sequel because then it turned into Robot from the Future. Spoiler alert, everybody, in case you haven't seen it in the last 30 years. Oh. Robot from the Future comes back to kill a woman so she doesn't destroy him even though he's the only reason that she destroyed him in the first place because he gave birth to himself and gave us the technology from the future that wouldn't have existed in the first place. Yeah, it's... It's like, well, wait, huh? It just it doesn't need to happen. Uh, yeah, and then that's not even dealing with those last couple of movies, which were just... Now, uh, that being said, Alien was just a monster movie in space, and then when Cameron got a hold of it, he made it into this amazing, like, paramilitary thing in the sequel. But... But I don't have high hopes for Terminator. Well, uh, yeah, but then again, once he was done with Aliens, James Cameron had done what James Cameron done does, and he could have walked away at that point. We did not need fucking Alien Resurrection. <laughs> we, did, we didn't even really need the fucking Alien on the prison colony. I don't but, know if that was Cameron, though. I don't know but, if that but was like, Cameron. They like, got all carried away, and it turned into... It, it was like, monster movie in space. Okay, this is cool. Now it's a paramilitary thing. Okay. Now we're basically rehashing the first movie, except it's on a prison colony. Yeah, but that's, and, that's, and now I mean, she's but, making out with the alien hybrid baby. Yeah. No, I know. I agree. I, uh, beyond that point, it, it, well, but I don't think that was Cameron involved. People, in people can leave shit alone. But I don't think he's necessarily going to direct this either. It's like talking to the Deadpool director. And we've had, we see lots of stuff where it's like somebody famous, you know, produced by somebody. And here's a terrible movie. You know, because it's directed by some French guy you don't know who who directed a short once that people thought was real, <laughs> yeah. really amazing. Who, who really thought, you know, we could do a lot by re-envisioning Terminator as an art film. <laughs> uh, I decided the robot angle wasn't, you know, wasn't really where we wanted to go. So this is more a film on the duality of man. <laughs> so the robot thinks it's human to begin right. with. Right. Yeah. He, d he doesn't want to be a Terminator. It's one of those movies where, like, they use all those colored filters. Like, when they're in Mexico, it's all yellow, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then they're in the this, this city, and it's blue, and it's dark. And then they look at the sky, and it's red. I, you know, that shit. You're just like, I don't know what's going on. Although, I, I, was, watching, uh, I, I was watching Pumpkinhead the other night. Oh, it's a great movie. A great movie. And it's funny, because I did notice, and I don't know why I never noticed it before, 
But anytime they, you know, go up into the hills or whatever, it totally looks like they're shooting it through a muddy camera because they just threw this bad brown filter over everything, so everything looks filthy. Right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, let's see. Along the release of its third paid expansion, Last Stand, Ubisoft is rolling out Update 1.6 to all players of its shooting game, The Division. In a blog post this week, Ubi outlined the changes, which the company says are some of the most significant it's brought to the apocalyptic game since its launch in March last year. Most important is the opening of a new area in the northern parts of the PvP and PvE Dark Zone, where Dark Zone 789 will now be available. Ubi describes the situations in these areas as especially dire, with a couple of surprises. The company says these new spaces, including vertical and underground arenas, Almost double the total size of the current Dark Zone, players will now be able to instant travel around the map. Clearing landmarks will now automatically place loot in the player's inventory, bypassing the need for physical extraction. However, landmarks spawn large numbers of NPC enemies, which become more ferocious in the far northern sections of the map. New hourly contamination events are being added, in which health management against enemies is vital. Leaderboards with rewards will also be available. We play this game all the time, and it is the most ridiculous uh, game in terms of ammunition spent trying to kill anyone. Like, you will fight a boss monster, and you will unload thousands, it's not an exaggeration, thousands of rounds to bring them down. Like, it's like, and, and even with regular guys on, like, street battles... It, it's crazy how much ammunition you're going through. You, you need that Jesse Ventura minigun from <laughs> Predator just to, like, try to get, like, any of these guys down on the ground. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Trees falling over yeah. and shit. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the level two acolyte is still standing there like, come on, come at me. Yeah, uh, that's what happens. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Research firm DFC Intelligence released a report this week in which it predicts that the Nintendo Switch Uh-oh. will sell 40 million units by the end of 2020. Uh, that's almost three times as many consoles as the Wii U sold over its first four years. Uh, maybe. In my opinion, they got to do better with the game list. I don't think once you get past this, inish, this inertia of the launch um, and you start having a reseller market from people that, you know, start throwing them up on eBay and everything and saturate the market with used units because they want the next big thing. Uh, Nintendo's got to step up. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, you know, if it's going to be like everything else they do, it's just going to be a bunch of Nintendo first party titles and um, some meandering third party titles here and there. But I don't know. I don't have a lot of hope for this thing, I guess. I mean, I'll own one, and, like, you know, Brian says you could play Skyrim, I guess, in bed, I guess, if that's what you want to do, but... Um, <laughs> Cause a lot of times I'm laying in bed, unable to fall asleep, and I'm like, maybe I should play Skyrim. Yeah, that was, I don't see it. I don't know. I'll bring it over Anderson's one day, when he has a place again, and uh, we'll hook it up, and we can both, like, play it at the same time we can see how terrible it is when we do that <laughs> right what if we just have to sit like right next to each other and stuff. Well, you come over here you can sit on one bed and i'll sit on the other <laughs> yeah. or we can play the nintendo switch i brought the switch all right dude i don't know and then i got a little bit of cleveland news and we got a couple emails and then we'll wrap it up okay and they're all going to be, all the emails are going to be, hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. <laughs> when, when, when driving in snow. That's fine. We, you guys can totally do your Brian impersonations. I know you've been polishing Whatever. them. Whatever. <laughs> a man was fatally shot Saturday afternoon following a robbery attempt, police said. Cleveland police officers were flagged down about 3.45 p.m. by residents who said a man was shot on the 2300 block of East 100th Street. Nice. Police spokesman Sergeant Jennifer Sacacia said, Police found a 33-year-old man with a gunshot wound to his leg. How do you die from getting shot in the leg? Injured? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, like, like was, was he shot out? last week? It's not like you can't walk to the hospital. I mean, you got a shot, you got shot in the leg. Well, Damn. I guess you bleed out. 
like hit a yeah, major but, artery. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, yeah. Unless you got shot like in the femoral artery, that's going to take a while. I mean, or you got hit with a really big bullet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It entered here at the kneecap, yeah. and then fucking removed. hollow point from a fucking forty-four or something. Removed half his torso. The injured man explained to police. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> still alive. That he was shot in an attempted robbery, and that he had fired back, hitting a twenty-seven-year-old man who had driven away in a silver SUV. The man had a handgun, and showed his concealed carry permit. Police followed the. What kind of, what's I the, don't think that helps you though. Well, as long as it's licensed. What's going on in this guy's <laughs> life? And he got that permit, and then ended up in a gun battle. Police found the silver <laughs> SUV crashed into a utility pole at the intersection of East 97th Street in Quebec. Sakasha uh, said the driver, who suffered gunshot wounds to his chest and legs, was taken to University Hospital by paramedics, where he was pronounced dead. He shot him pretty good with his concealed carry defense weapon. How do you get the guy in the car in the legs? No. It's interesting. The deceased man has not yet been publicly named. The Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office will release his identity once family has been notified. Detectives learned from the 33-year-old injured man that he and several other men were shooting dice in the parking lot of Bolton Elementary School. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> of the- course they were. The 27-year-old shooter approached them in a robbery attempt, Sakasia said. The injured man and the robber shot at each other, and both were struck by gunfire. The injured man was treated for his wound and released from university hospitals. He is not in police custody. Of course not. Cleveland police homicide detectives will continue to investigate. I don't think a CCW actually allows you to just shoot guys during dice games. (laughs) Okay, well... You have a license, so I guess we're good to go. Have a nice day. Yeah, try, try not to do that next to a school, because I, I think that yeah, wasn't allowed for the longest time. Yeah, and for, for everybody at, everybody listening at home wondering why we all talk about buying houses or moving to the suburbs, there you go. Yep. Gun battles next to the elementary schools Dude, while, I, while they're shooting dice. I, uh, I remember when I worked at Pizza Hut over there, like on 117th, which isn't even the east side. To like the west side and i remember going to like 75th street or 65th street or something and i had i walked around the back of the house and there's three guys shooting dice and i just froze because i did i was just like oh no i interrupted their game now i'm dead yeah i mean i and, th- and that's not even on the east side yeah. <laughs> on the east side it's even worse yeah like yeah like this was east 100th and in the in that dude's defense i, I wouldn't go to east 100th without a gun either right you don't stop if you're if you're out that way, you don't. Yep. Nope. Keep moving. You get a Stop flat tire, you ride that rim. Yeah. You just get out of the car and run. <laughs> Let the well, car keep rolling. Recently, North Royalton, the gun, the one gun store that's in North Royalton, got robbed, and like five long guns got stolen. And here we have Cleveland police and the Cleveland division of the FBI are looking for four men. Who robbed a PNC bank Saturday? Uh oh, Larry. Uh oh. They are considered armed and dangerous. The robbery huh. happened shortly before 1 p.m. in the 2700 block of South Moreland Avenue. No injuries have been reported. The four robbers entered the bank and started yelling at employees and customers, demanding them put their hands up and get on the ground, the FBI said. One of the men with a bag in his hand jumped the counter and emptied two cash drawers. One of the two men demanded that a teller get on her knees the FBI said. Once the teller was on her knees, another robber fired a gunshot into the wall behind the teller counter. That's weird. A witness on East... What did you got to do our Grand Theft Auto? East 127th Street saw a man with a long gun get out of the driver's seat of an orange Honda Element, the FBI said. When he exited the vehicle, it caught fire. Two men got into another one, possibly (laughs) green or blue, the FBI said. The Honda Element may have been torched. You think? The FBI said. The men who robbed this PNC bank are possibly connected to another bank robbery in Highland Heights. Special Agent Vicki Anderson said. In oh. relation to Don Anderson. I'm not allowed to say. Reward money is available. And PNC Bank is offering an additional $10,000 reward. So if you know those guys and you don't... Would like $10,000. Yeah, you don't follow the snitching, the no snitching rules in your yeah. neighborhood. Get your, get your pay money. 
that no snitching stuff doesn't work around here. If that was, was me, will, you guys would throw me under the bus in seconds for ten thousand dollars. I will. I will vouch and say that um, PNC is good for the ten grand. I got it. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do a couple emails and then we'll wrap it up. This one comes from Alex, and he writes to Trip's annoying girlfriend at VideoGameNews.com. Oh my god. <laughs> What? Yeah. What? I love Veronica. Uh, all right, Drangus. Kevin, take your $7,000 casino winnings and fix Adam's boat up just enough to make it seaworthy. Nope. Then you can sail with Adam and Dan James down to Cuba because that is allowed now and spend the rest of your winnings on a sweet-ass vacation down there. Could you, listen, I'm even if I could like go on a boat and make it to Cuba I'm not going with Dan James and Adam <laughs> right <laughs> I mean that would be the best vacation ever let's be serious no. No, <laughs> we drove past Adam's house today and Sophie goes oh the boat's still there if we got arrested like those two guys could not like talk their way out of it they'd be in jail forever there right as for me, I just went to China. He spelled it C-H-A-Y-N-A-H. Hong Kong and Macau. China and Hong Kong were cool, but Macau is about as depressing as South Lake Tahoe is these days, ever since the Indian casinos came about. Oh, bloody. I thought it would be glamorous, but it was just full of people playing weird Asian games. Everyone was quiet and no one was smoking. Very weird. I listened to your January 8th show while at the gym and almost dropped 190 pounds onto my throat because I started laughing while decline bench pressing. So thanks for that. I don't know what we talked about on January 8th, but You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. January 8th was also my birthday. I was in Hong Kong and got drunk with a bunch of people from my hostel and a guy pooped his pants. So it was pretty awesome. So it was a pretty awesome birthday. Now I'm back in California and jet lagged as hell. That's, try... that's usually the barometer I use for my birthdays. <laughs> if no one poops their pants, I'm like, well, this birthday sucked. Yeah. It's usually you that are pooping your pants up there. Let's be honest. I don't hang out with them enough, I guess. I'm going to poop my pants. Uh, now I'm back in California and jet lagged as hell. I tried drinking to make myself fall asleep, but now it is 7.30 a.m. and I am wasted and wide awake. P.S. I went to the Warriors Cav game yesterday and we fucked y'all up. 120-something to 91, Alex. Hey. It's all right. Yeah, you know. Still beat you. Champions. Yeah. Enjoy the enjoy those regular season wins. They're 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 awesome and they beat you on Christmas. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Macau. I think you can uh you can gamble there, right? Cuz it's like the thing like you can legally or something you can't gamble in China or you can't have casinos or something. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the rules are. But um, Macau being independent, I guess you can do that there. So there's like casinos there or something. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't got anything else. But thanks for writing in. Yeah. This one's from Don's friend Mitchell. Hey. And he writes to Freebird at VideoGameNews.com. Freebird. I'm not doing Freebird. Hey, Freebird. Cleveland crew. So now that Don has a PlayStation 4, would you ever loan him any games? We covered that. I assume Brian borrows some of Kevin's games since they are brothers. No. I would assume Kevin would like to borrow some games from Brian. No. But Brian can't <laughs> describe the games he does have. Brian voice. This game has shooting and jumping and you get coins in it. In this other one, you are a guy who drives this thing and you sleep during the day. I love when Brian reviews games and Kevin gets mad and accuses as Brian of not ever playing them. <laughs> Finally, do you think you convinced Larry Mack to buy a next-gen console so he can just join in this gaming century? You guys rock, Mitchell. Uh, I can't speak for Larry, but now that yeah. he's rich from his uh, soon-to-be appointment as president of PNC, yeah. he might be able to afford it. I, um, I do have a uh, Nintendo Wii. It's part of the I problem. believe that's the current generation. Quite hip. Part of the problem is, is Larry does not want a high definition television. Yeah. So, you know, he would have to have that before he got a game system right. uh, that he could plug into it. Zero interest <laughs> in spending that money on a TV. 
It's there you go. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't see Brian. Brian lives. People don't seem to understand where Brian lives. Brian might as well live in Texas because he lives too okay. far away. I don't know about that. It it it's, it's the far. same level of inconvenience to go all the way out there to his house, <laughs> especially because Brian, when you get there. Well, get all squinty-eyed and act like he's getting tired and you have to leave. Well, yeah, that's a whole different issue. <laughs> I mean, it's like 45 minutes, though. <sighs> it doesn't feel like 45 minutes. It feels a lot. When 90 ends and you're still driving east, it seems like, too long. I mean, that, I mean, that's where I used to go every week to play volleyball. Okay. I don't know. I'm with you, Kev. <laughs> okay. And whenever I see that Lost Nation Road sign, I'm like, damn, I am really far. Okay, he's not that far out. He's, he's not past Lost Nation. He's pretty far. But whenever I, I, go, I go out that way more than just this, I don't ever see Brian out there. I got relatives out there. Yeah, now, like, Donnie can't do it because that's too many miles on the car. It's it's above his <laughs> daily allotment. <laughs> that. <laughs> well, Brian's not making a big effort to come over here, although well, he does show uh, yeah. up for game night once yeah. in a while. I mean, we <laughs> exchange trinkets at that Yeah. Time. He does show up at game night long enough to sit down and start playing on his phone and the ignore the game. Yeah. <laughs> and and the other like, thing what? is that when we give Brian like consoles and games and stuff, he just goes home and gives them to his daughter as a gift from daddy. <laughs> so, you know. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Got you this. It's don't let your uncle but... Kevin tell you any different. <laughs> yeah. You know, she don't even write. She doesn't even know me, really. So she has no <laughs> idea who Uncle Kevin is. D- Daddy, some guy named Kevin called looking for you. Ah, uh, wrong number. Yeah, yeah. Like I call Brian. That's another thing. <laughs> Brian doesn't have a phone. Okay, he used to have a phone that you could text and get responses to, and then the the iPhone breaking incident that if you're a listener you know about. Okay, <laughs> so he's gotten a replacement from that phone. But he's told no one what the number is. And eventually I had to ask him for the number for illegal for illegal reasons. He gave me a number. I've tried texting it with all kinds of shit. And he's never responded. So I'm pretty sure that's Jody's number. And she has no idea who I am when I'm texting. So I I don't know if Brian actually owns a phone. I think he does. But he doesn't text on it. Have you guys gotten any texts from Brian in the last year and a half? Oh, or no, I no, got the last time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, may, maybe I was to say maybe the last wasteland. Like, what room were you in? Maybe, but that would have been last year. Even and then, like, I, I texted him, and, 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 and even then, it was probably it. Oz or something letting me know what room they were in. They yeah, might, he, they they might have a house phone too. I don't know too many people that still have a house phone, except for old people, but. Um, they may have a house phone, but I don't know the number to that either. And no, it would I be text so- him and he goes. Well, okay. yeah, if, yeah. if you don't have his number, then how did you ask for his number for legal reasons? Well, because I ask on Facebook. Oh, he responds on Facebook Messenger. He uses oh, okay. Facebook Messenger, and you can sometimes get an answer. Most of the time, you get a you get a picture that. <laughs> Generally <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> the, to the emoji con- answers he says to the everything. to the conversation. No, I don't even. Use, an emoji might make some sense. You'll just get a picture, like of a guy. Like you'll say something like, "Hey, are you coming over?" And then he'll show like Colonel Potter. That'll be like the picture response. Right. And you don't know what that means, <laughs> but that's that is about at least. At least fifty percent of the time, there's just so easy, uh, totally nothing. The pictures make no sense. They make no sense. It makes sense to him, I guess, or he just gives up and finds like a picture and just sends that as his response. So Brian, yeah, no. If he, if we don't do this show where he shows up once every two weeks, um, I would never talk to my brother. That's just how it is. So yeah, the, we're not trading games. <laughs> If Anderson had his own place, I'd probably see him a little bit, but, right. you, you know, I can't really Kevin go over there. like to come over to my parents' house. I mean, look, work. I'm, if I go there, your dad's going to put me to work. Right. <laughs> and then my mom gets into all the computer questions. 
your mom's your mom's pretty cool though. Your mom showed me how to do tarot cards once, so that was cool. But uh, your dad, your dad was gonna put. He made a stack of wood, and rake leaves, and stuff. But okay. your, your dad's cool. Your dad's cool. I'm just kidding. He he was scary though when I first met him because he scares everybody. He's loud. Yes. You know. He's but, loud and Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no, no, I like your folks. Sometimes though, when you would go over Anderson's house, there would be these other Scottish people there that you just didn't, you never spoke to them. They yeah. would just be chucking cabers at you and stuff, <laughs> swinging claymores. Just walk past them. <laughs> They're just be like a couple of like Scottish women, like staring out the window or something. Yeah, you just walk by, like you don't say hi to them or anything. It's just, it's just nope. strange. Well, keep know. moving. Don't make eye contact. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was funny though. Okay, that's it for the show. We'll be back next week, maybe with Brian, if he doesn't have another birthday to celebrate. And uh, Larry might buy a house, and Anderson might own a game that he wants to play on the PlayStation 4. Woo! So Woo! Lots to look forward to. So yeah. we'll see you guys next week. Good night. Later. Peace.